You can see uh, the band of clouds is uh, just moving to the left and to the right of Scorpius. Milky Way core season has been in full swing for some time now and yet I still haven't been able to photograph it really well this year. So when the weather forecast looked half decent, Corne and myself decided kind of last minute to take a gamble and drive 5 hours to a dark region in France. There aren't many hotels in the area and it was already getting late. Have you ever managed to book your room via SMS and Google Translate only? Well, we did. Now we were settled, it was time to hit the road into the dark and hopefully clear starry night. Good evening, welcome back to the channel. Hello. Tonight I am with Corne Auerhand and uh, we just drove about five hours to a Bortel 3 region in France. The weather looked a bit sketchy, it's about 50-50, but we hope to shoot the rising Milky Way. Not yet. <laughs> So uh, you're looking to the first composition of the evening. Uh, just to be sure that you know what we are doing. Uh, we are choosing to just drive around uh, until about three o'clock and then we will do our star shots. That means we will shoot the foregrounds first. Uh, we're making sure that we are looking to the southeast where the Milky Way core will be rising. So uh, yeah, this tree, free of the horizon, pretty simple start, but uh, I think it's uh, strong enough. So uh, let's uh, shoot this baby. <laughs> After finishing our first foreground, we drove to a little airfield which I had scouted about three years ago. Just a little tip here, always mark your potential compositions on Google Maps or something, so that you can find it back later. Okay, so we have now arrived at this airfield. Uh, it's uh, yeah, pretty easily reachable, it's just uh, 20 meters from the road and there's an historical airplane here which we think makes a beautiful subject under the Milky Way. The Milky Way uh, core will rise a bit to the right, so I'm planning a composition so that it will yeah, arch over uh, the airplane. Uh, Corne has also made a couple of shots. Uh, as you can also see, it is clearing up. Uh, Bortel 3 skies here. Extremely dark. He's, uh, Corne and me are very enthusiastic at the moment. My I'll first have... experience in Portal 3. It's seriously epic. It is, man. It's so dark. Ah, oh, look, you can see the Milky Way already yeah, here. I've, I got wow. it on. It's uh, sickness is rising just above the clouds now. Yep. And the core is still below the horizon and still some clouds over there, but it's that is going away from us. So Awesome. And there's almost nothing coming, a little bit, but it will do the trick. Oh, it's so amazing. Okay, let's continue shooting and uh, after that I think we maybe have time for one or maybe two more foreground shots before we'll have to set up our tracker somewhere. And uh, fingers crossed for clear skies, but hey, it's uh, turning out great. After we finished up at the airfield, we drove to our third location of the evening. Unfortunately, you might have noticed that uh, within about 15 minutes the clouds came rolling back in. Yeah, we're now uh, looking to uh, yeah, some high clouds, we see some stars. Um, yeah, but we, we are pushing through. Uh, I have just put uh, my tripod here and I've shot this foreground with the, uh, with the tree. Um, I've also made a quick panorama just testing my new lens and my new camera system. I'll come back to that later. Uh, at f1.8 uh, single shots only, let's see how that comes out. Just before the clouds came rolling in, we saw sickness uh, above the road. Um, yeah, fingers crossed man. Uh, Corne is now uh, behind me uh, walking up to a mountain where we are going to put up our trackers and uh, let's hope we get some clear gaps uh, before uh, dawn arrives. We only need, I mean, 20 minutes or something and we will save our shot. So it's, I'm getting a bit nervous, but hey, still, if it doesn't work out, you know, that's also part of the game. And I think we enjoyed our night anyway. So uh, we saw stars, we saw Bortel 3 skies, but maybe just those clear skies were a little bit too early. But uh, let's see, let's see what happens. I just told you we were in a dark Bortel 3 region. So how do we find these dark regions? I normally use a website called lightpollutionmap.info and it shows you in this map where the dark or lighter regions of the world are. 
Uh, this uh, yeah, bright blob of light which you see uh, is the Netherlands where I live, one of the worst countries uh, if you are an astrophotographer. Um, but you can also see uh, in the vicinity or the relative vicinity where the darker regions lie. As you go more to the green and the blue regions, even the black regions here at sea, you, uh, you know that it is uh, pretty dark. Um, Green means normally that is pretty good and blue means it is really good. So in this case we chose to uh, drive to the Champagne Ardennes region here in France which is a Bortle 3. Um, normally uh, as a basis I must say it shows the uh, World Atlas 2015 layer which is a little bit outdated. Uh, you will also have the option here uh, to choose another visualization layer called the Virus layer and it is updated every year. Also here for 2023 and you can see that the region we chose here around Fougier, Busancy still looks pretty good to shoot the Milky Way. However, uh, if the clouds remain, it is not any good at all, right? So <laughs> let's go back to the field and see how we do in France. So uh, we have now uh, set up our trackers and um, yeah, clouds have come back pretty hard actually. Sometimes there's a little bit of a hazy Milky Way visible. But uh, yeah, we still have one and a half hours before dawn, so uh, we will just keep shooting and uh, see how it goes. The band of clouds is uh, just moving to the left and to the right of Scorpius. Scorpio, what is it called? You know what I mean. Row, row, row of Yuki. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the Milky Way is hiding a little bit there. So we hope we will see the Milky Way band in uh, sometime tonight. Yeah, if I look there, we see uh, more and more stars. But still there remains some haze, but yeah, we don't... Uh, really care about the haze anymore. As long as we get a little bit of the Milky Way band, I think we will be more than happy. Yep. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Through all the haze, we just kept on trying and trying and trying. Okay, so uh, while we are now getting some more clouds, it's uh, yeah, some small gaps between the clouds, but it's really cool because the Milky Way just uh, sometimes pops through. Makes it kind of mysterious. I think it'll work with the shots. But uh, let me talk you through my new setup. Uh, I have uh, bought a new camera. It's a Nikon Z6 and I have, <laughs> and I have a 20mm f1.8 Z lens on it. It's a bit inspired by Richard Tetty. But uh, yeah, so far it's uh, performing pretty well. So uh, yeah, basically why uh, I've uh, upgraded uh, is not because I was not happy about the Canon, but uh, the Canon was getting a bit old, uh, the uh, 6D. And uh, to be honest, uh, also the lenses were so heavy and I might want to upgrade in the future to a, a Nomad Star Tracker or just a smaller Star Tracker so that I don't have to carry all this uh, large equipment around. I mean, I'm also getting old. <laughs> I knew he was going to say that. But hey, uh, so far it is uh, performing pretty well. I had some problems uh, focusing uh, at the beginning, but uh, I noticed if I switch my lens on and off, it focuses to infinity uh, automatically and it does it pretty well. So uh, that's a pretty lazy one. <laughs> Yeah, I see that uh, row of Fuki is getting a bit clear again, so uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll make some uh, extra shots and uh, this night will be successful after all. Nice. So I guess you're curious by now how our pictures turn out. Well, I have to say, better than expected, despite the clouds. 
This first shot of the road with the tree uh, consists of a tracked single exposure f2.8 ISO 1600 uh, at 90, 90 seconds. And uh, yeah, the foreground is also a one single exposure and then uh, blended together in post processing. Despite the clouds, I think the Milky Way mysteriously shows up pretty well here. After that we went to the airfield with the historical airplane and this might be one of my favorite uh, results of the evening. Uh, settings wise it was yeah, exactly the same as the previous shot, um, besides that the tracking went on for 60 seconds instead of 90. But yeah, uh, the storytelling in this one just looks really good I think. I mean the airplane just as if you can step into it and fly away into the Milky Way. Really love this one. So the next one is a little bit of a bonus shot. Uh, I uh, yeah, shot this one pretty quickly on the road at our last location, just when we saw some clouds coming in. Uh, this is just uh, a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, panel panorama, just uh, consisting of single shots, uh, shot at ISO 3200, 20 millimeters f 1.8 and 15 second exposures. Uh, shooting at 1.8, I am really surprised by the performance of this lens because even the core look pretty well um, yeah the result I'm not totally sure I think it's a bit messy with the clouds and especially that that cloud just uh, yeah, at the top of the Milky Way just through sickness but hey it's still a nice bonus shot this one might also be a contender for my favorite of the evening. Uh, just when we went back to the hotel, we uh, passed through this uh, yeah, field of uh, yellow flowers. I think they are rapeseed flowers, I'm not totally sure. But yeah, I really like that the small tree uh, just breaks the horizon in the valley in the distance. So we decided just to uh, yeah, shoot this foreground and see if we could blend it later. And I think this turned out pretty well. Uh, technically, this uh, is also a single tracked exposure ISO 1600 also at the 20 millimeter lens of course uh, f2.8 and 90 seconds so yeah four shots uh, pretty good evening despite the clouds I think yeah the clouds kind of add some mystery to the shot but yeah of course we would prefer to have it uh, yeah, totally clear but you know sometimes it's just not the case and we have to work with what we get and that's exactly what we did um, you might be curious also about Cornet's results uh, I'll pop them up uh, just now uh, for now I thank you again for watching and I'll see you on the next one bye bye